What's the word, y'all? Today, I want to talk about the MVP race, man. Because, honestly, we're a third of the way through the season. And if I were to have a vote, which I don't, but NBA, <laughs> what, 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 do, what do I got to do to get a vote, man? If I were to have a vote a quarter of the way through the season, I don't know who I would give my vote to. It feels like my personal opinion on who the league's MVP is is flipping from day to day. So, reminder, I am just one dude with an NBA opinion. You may completely disagree, especially on a topic like this. There's so many options. That's completely okay. Use that comment section. Let's talk it out. Leave a like. But let's get to our sponsor. And listen, y'all know the sponsor of this channel is, of course, Price Picks, man. Hit that link in the description. Download the Price Picks app and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new users. Of course, it is just you versus the numbers. Y'all know I'm an NBA guy, and every single day I'm making an entry about the NBA. But they have football. They're going to have baseball when it comes back. MMA, eSports. There's so many different options that I don't want to just limit you to basketball. And yesterday, I ended up hitting on my entry, and I did something I've never done before. Because you can make an entry dealing with a person over or under for an entire game, but since it was a small slate of games, I decided, hmm, K Cunningham at nine and a half points in the first half, I think he can hit over that in the first half, and he did. I did the same thing for the first half for DeAndre Aiden's fantasy points. He hit that easily. I took Joel Embiid's points because he's a one-man wrecking crew. Julius Randle went to the line, shot six free throws, and I took the over on Gary, Gary Bird's threes, but he got exactly two, which kind of voided it, but this was a big, big-time win. So hit that link in the description, download probably Price picks use code Kenny because they're matching every deposit for new users up to $100. Go ahead, join all the over thousands of people that have used my my code, and and I've enjoyed the product so much that me and my team have become investors. I don't know if I set that on the channel just yet, but I am an investor of Price Picks now, man. I loved it that much, so join in on the fun and let me know how you do. All right, so there are two different catalysts for today's video. The first one is Kevin Durant. These last couple days have games have been incredible. Um, the NBA has a, a whole virus problem going on right now, so because of that, every single team has like five players, it seems like, in healthy safety protocol, so they cannot play. So the last couple games you had Kevin Durant dropping 51 against the Detroit Pistons, and I talked about this on the show, and people in the comment section was like, relax, Kenny, it's the Pistons. Who cares? Next game, he had a triple-double with a bunch of players that were on the court that nobody knew who they were like two weeks ago. And then today, a similar thing where they were playing with players like Blake Play, Niggas Claxton Play, Patty Mills Play. But after that, we talking rookies or players that you don't even know existed. And Kevin Durant put on the backpack and carried this team to three straight wins. He clutched shots over good defenders today on the 76ers. He continues to make the case so I saw that happen today, and that made me want to talk about it. And then the second thing, and then the second thing was Tim Bontemps of ESPN does this every single year, where he talks to 100 different NBA insiders and asks them, what's your MVP ballot looking like right now? And well, the, the results were kind of surprising to me. And here they are. Steph Curry has 94 first place votes, which is, which is crazy. Now, I'm not saying he don't deserve it, but I definitely look at the way the NBA landscape is right now and would have thought this would have been a lot closer than what it is. Shout out to Steph Curry. He's doing amazing things. I'm not even saying that I wouldn't have him as a front runner right now, but I think it's way closer than saying Steph Curry is by far ahead of everybody. Like, I think that all four of the top candidates, I'm talking KD, I'm talking Steph, I'm talking Giannis, and I'm talking Jokic, all have cases that if you pleaded it to me, I cannot tell you that you're wrong. I might say I disagree with it. I don't know if that person is the MVP, but I cannot tell you that that player does not deserve the MVP award at this point. So let's go through the resumes of these players right now and kind of talk through who could be the vote. Again, I already talked about Kevin Durant's case a little bit, but let's go even more in depth. In the last five, and I know it's been almost 30 games of the season, and we don't want to just focus on the last five, but you know Kevin Durant's stats are elite already. But in the last five, the man is averaging 35 points per game, eight and a half rebounds, seven and a half assists. He is shooting 50% from the field. He is shooting 38% from three, 95% from the free throw line. He is playmaking more than he's ever done. And a couple games this season, he has taken the assignment of stepping up against the other team's best player and clamping that guy up, and he is putting on a backpack. And the team is the number one team in the East with a lot of different distractions slash things. This is a 21 and 8 team right now. James Harden, who's supposed to be the secondary star, hasn't looked nearly like the James Harden we thought we were going to get. And Kyrie Irving ain't even suited up this season. This is the best team in the East record-wise. And a lot of that, majority of that is because Kevin Durant has been a one-man bucket, a one-man point guard playmaker, a one-man defender protecting the paint and guarding the perimeter. His case 
is amazing. So if you told me right now KD is your MVP, I'm going to say I respect it. So let's talk about the case for Steph Curry. You, again, Tim Bontips and his 100 insiders have him as the guy that is in the driving seat, and it is his award to lose at this moment. Again, the total voting, 94 out of the 100 first place votes. The, uh, the argument is for itself, right? They're the best team in the league, at least tied for the best record with the Phoenix Suns at this moment. He's a big driving force. And I think that majority of people were kind of, we didn't really know what they were going to get for from the Golden State Warriors this season, right? There are a lot of question marks. Klay Thompson, James Wiseman, and the other young dudes, none of those dudes have even done anything. It's really been Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and a bunch of very good role players that understand what to do on the court. And Steph Curry has been amazing. But the reason why it was surprising to me that he has 94% of the votes at this moment is that the last couple weeks haven't been the best play for Steph Curry. Now, he did break the record for the all-time three-pointers, so that definitely helps right now. But if we're looking at the last seven games, Steph Curry's averaging 24, 5, and 5, which is great counting stats, but he's not shooting at the same efficiency that we're expecting Steph Curry to do. He's shooting 37% from the field, 36% from three. But again, even though Steph Curry's the greatest shooter of all time, all of his value doesn't come in the counting stats and, and how much he's hitting from the field or how much he's missing because he has the gravity thing. And I know Steph Curry haters hate when you talk about gravity, but it is a real thing. And I don't think I know some people have the opinion, and again, I just disagree. I'm not saying that you're crazy for thinking this. Um, some people think that because of Steph Curry's gravity, even when he's having a terrible shooting night, he's still impacting the game positively and, and up to the point where you can't say he had a bad game because of his gravity. Because even if Steph Curry is 0 for 9 from the field right now, I'm not going to stop defending him. He's Steph Curry. He can, he can catch fire and hit the next 9. You know what I'm saying? Um, so he hasn't been amazing individually over the last seven, but the team has been able to to sustain that and still win close games. And some of these games is him closing out. The Steph Curry conversation or the argument doesn't need to be made because most people have him as their MVP right now. So let's talk about some of the other dudes. The third place person on his list was Giannis. And that was surprising to me because honestly, if I were to to rank these things, I think that, the, that Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and Jokic are all in a tier as top three. And Giannis is beneath them. I think Giannis, for me, if I was going to pick it, Giannis is in fourth place. And then the other three, I don't really know the order. But according to Tim Bontemps and these 100 insiders, Giannis is number three on the list. Which, again, I can't say they're crazy. I'm just saying that I don't agree with him being number three. He he had the MVP season, the Finals MVP season last year. And this year, he's been just as good. Not better. A lot of these people... That we're seeing on this case, the other three people that we've talked about had a very good season last year and then elevated it, got even better. The same can't really be said about Giannis. Not saying that he's having a bad year. It's been a very steady year to what we've seen last year. I think that I even made a video on this channel during the offseason or during the preseason because he was taking those shots with confidence. He was hitting them. It was like, oh, snap, that three-point shot is going to come around. But it's basically the same as it has been any other year. The case for, for Giannis is this, this team started off very slowly because they had a lot of injuries and they're still dealing with injuries. And then, boom, he had his right-hand man and his left-hand man come back in, and they immediately went on a huge run. And Giannis had the game winners where he's putting up 40 points and all of that. He's still the greatest help defender in the entire NBA, one of the greatest defenders at all in the entire NBA. So his case still, he still has a case, but I don't think his case is as strong at this point a quarter of the way or a third of the way through the season as the other three. And then lastly here is Nikola Jokic. And, and Zach Lowe and, and a lot of NBA nerds have Nikola Jokic and an entire tier with the other guys. And I'm, I'm a part of that crew, man. I guess I'm considered an advanced stat nerd because I don't know how you can have a conversation about the MVP and leave Nikola Jokic off of it. I know in previous seasons, I guess throughout most of the history of the NBA, to win the MVP award, more than likely you have to be on one of the best teams in the league. And the major knock on Nikola Jokic is... Ah, his team is not winning. But if you look at the stats and you you he passes all of the eye tests, they are one of the greatest teams in the history of basketball when he's on the court and then one of the worst teams in the history of basketball when he's not. His point differential is like 30. The team is 30 points better when Nikola Jokic is on the court versus when he's not. That has never been done in the history of basketball before. Now, uh, uh, Kevin O'Connor... Shout out to him. 
And and Ben um, Ben Taylor at Thinking Basketball had a great podcast where you're talking about all things. They talked stuff. They talked yoke is they talked about a bunch of different stuff and it was a very good conversation and, and some of the stuff that we're mentioning about Jokic in that video again i'm not a guy that typically looks at advanced stats but when i watch basketball i know that nicole Jokic should be mvp conversations and i listen to that podcast and they're throwing numbers at it to prove it i'm like yo get him more love right now and listen i've never been a person that agreed with voters fatigue um, and I don't even know how you could have voters fatigue after somebody wins one award. Typically, voters fatigue is like, oh, man, just won two in a row, three in a row. I'm not giving it to him again. I've never believed in voters fatigue personally. If you have the best individual season for nine years in a row, you deserve that award nine years in a row. And people are saying that, ah, oh, Jokic won it last year, so let somebody else get it. It's, it's ludicrous to me. It's just... It's devaluing the award if we're telling somebody that he doesn't qualify because he did it last year. Now, the biggest argument that we mentioned earlier is that the team is not as good, and that is a valid argument, but I would argue, what is bro supposed to, he's literally doing everything. <laughs> he's literally doing everything, and he doesn't have his third and his second best player. And again, the reason why I'm talking about this now is because I'm, I'm looking back, I'm thinking about previous seasons of me as a, as a basketball fan, it had always been pretty clear who my MVP was, right? Last year, I was in a camp that thought Jokic, and if you look at the voting, everybody that voted gave Jokic. Jokic won 91% of the first place votes. Everybody knew Jokic was last year. The year before that, it was Giannis. Everybody knew that. The year before that, it was Giannis. Everybody knew that. The year before that, it was James Harden. He even beat out everybody. Uh, LeBron James was a little bit behind him with 15 out of, out of the 100 votes. And then the only time I could really think about where I was this indecisive about my own personal MVP vote was the 2016-2017 season, Russell Westbrook versus James Harden. And even to this day, I still don't know. I have flip-flopped on that thing so many times, my guy. <laughs> and that season happened five years ago, and I still don't know who I wanted to give my award to. And this season, if everything keeps going the same, might be the same. But again, I mean, I mean, th things go like this all the time, I guess where somebody's probably going to raise their neck above the others. And, and my guess is if the Warriors continue to be great um, and be the best team in the league, Steph Curry will win another MVP award. But I honestly do believe that my opinion on some of these things haven't changed, man, which is cool. I, I like that my opinions and things aren't as straightforward as they were seven years ago because I'm, I'm a different person now. I look at things from a different lens now. I used to be one of the dudes that would say, ah, oh, bro is having an amazing season, but they the five C. So like, how, how much does it matter? You know what I'm saying? And I don't think that's how I believe it anymore. I think that Jokic could win MVP. I mean, I'm not a voter, but Jokic could get my MVP vote even if they aren't one of the top three seeds in their conference. Very interesting stuff, man. There are definitely some people, and listen, I don't want to sound like a hater, but I'm going to sound like a hater in this moment. There are some people that got these voter voting like credentials that obviously don't take it serious. Like think about the history of people that be getting votes. Let, let's just go through some, just re just real quick. I know I made a whole video about this like two years ago, but I just, I just wanna showcase some of them. What about the year back in 2012, 2013, where LeBron James was one vote away from being the, the first unanimous MVP voter? The one guy gave it to Carmelo Anthony. I always like coming back to articles like this because they, <laughs> they talk about this. The, this is the year. The Knicks won 54 games and he won 66. The, the Knicks ended up winning 12 straight games that season while the Heat won 27. Who broke that streak? None other than the Chicago Bulls. L yeah, I remember that day. The numbers were so um, uh, uh, tilted in LeBron's favor that he actually lapped Anthony and a number of value stats. <laughs> James doubled Carmelo's total win shares uh, box plus minus and VORP VORP. I don't even know what that stands for. Melo won the score title, but LeBron beats him in rebounds, assists, blocks, and virtually every metric of offensive uh, efficiency. Shout out to Melo. He had an amazing season. I'm not discrediting him that, but he had no business getting an MVP vote, first place MVP vote over LeBron. And I guess most of the cases for people not taking it serious don't really come up in MVP. It comes up in all NBA. It comes up in all defensive. And you're like, Kenny, why does that matter? Well, a lot of the, the contracts that people get are incentivized by making all NBA and all in all defensive. So if you have people in the voting system that aren't taking it seriously, there's some people missing out on bread that could have made some bread. I'm just saying, get some people out there that care.
And I will take, boy, I will take that serious. <laughs> I, I will treat that like it's a final exam. If I don't pass, I don't get a degree. I'm, t I'm telling you, don't mess with me. Either way, let me know in the comment section a quarter of the way through the season, or I guess a third of the way through the season, who would be your league MVP right now? And then we will circle back to this um, two-thirds of the way through the season at the end of the season to figure out how things have changed. My reminder to y'all, enjoy basketball, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.